and welcome back to another Roblox video. And today I decided I was going to show you guys how to make a shadow head profile picture like the one right here. So I thought you guys might want to see a tutorial on this and these are actually super easy to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you do make sure to leave a big thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials coming up in the future. If you guys want to see a full graphics tutorial on how I make my normal graphics, then leave a comment down below that you want to see that and I will put that on my schedule. So let's just get right into the tutorial. So first of all, the three programs you're going to need to do this, you are going to need Roblox Studio, Paint.net, and Blender. Now all these programs are completely free to use, so the first thing you would need to do is that you need to go into Roblox Studio and I will leave links for all the programs down in the description so you can download them just in case if you don't have them already. So first in Roblox Studio, if you're not already in this tab, you would select new on the left side right at the top and you would select base plate. So this is where I get all my models is from Roblox Studio. I use a load character plugin. If you guys don't have it, I will show you how to get it right now. So right up here at the top, you're going to click plugins and I have load character to get my characters in. If you do not have it, here's how you get it. Right here at the top left again, you're going to hit manage plugins and it'll open a little plugins page and shows you all the ones you already have. You're going to click find plugins, the big blue button and then it'll take you to a Roblox page with all the plugins they have available. Load character with this little guy on it is the one I use. It should be close to the top because it's very popular, so you'll be able to find it really easily. It'll bring you to this page and it'll say install on this green button right here. Now it says reinstall of course because I already have it, but after you hit install it should add it to your Roblox Studio. So you can just X out this tab right here on the top and go back to your base plate. Now if you don't have the plugin yet, after you installed it, you may need to restart Roblox Studio just to make sure the plugin installs. So after you do that and you have load character, you're going to click it and type in the character that you want to make. Just type in their Roblox username. I'm going to make one of my new Roblox character. Now you want to make sure you tick spawn at origin because that makes it so much easier in the long run, so make sure you have this little box ticked right there. R6 or R15 doesn't matter, I just usually do R6 because it's less parts to mess with. So after you have your character loaded into the base plate right here, you can just go and see she's right there. So on the right, in the explorer right here, you're going to see, you know, your username right here with the little blocks. You're going to open it with this arrow right here and it's going to show everything inside your character. Now you want to pretty much delete everything except the head, your hat, and the humanoid part right here. So we're just going to delete everything out of here and just remove it. Make sure to leave the hats and everything else. But So now we have everything removed from my character except for my hats, humanoid, and face. So what you want to do is you want to open the head, find the face decal, and delete that as well because we want it to have like a nice smooth texture unless you want to have the face and that is totally up to you, whatever you want to do. Now what I recommend you do now before we move on is you go to your desktop and make a new folder. And why you want to make a new folder on your desktop is to keep all your files in and make sure it's super organized. I already made one so just go ahead and make one of those now. So after you've done that and made a folder, what you want to do is in the explorer again, you want to right click where your character is, go to the bottom and select export selection. Then when the file explorer opens, you want to find the folder you made to put all your stuff in. I put it on the desktop and I named it tutorial. Now you're just going to type in a name and you're going to hit save and that saved it to the folder. So now what you want to do is you can exit Roblox Studio because you're completely done with that. What you want to do now is open paint.net. So right at the top of paint.net on the left, you want to click file, open and then find the folder with all your textures in it. So now you want to select the texture with only one, if that makes sense. So you don't want to open the one with all the textures in the same place. You just want to open the one with one thing only. So just the hair. So now that you have the hair or whatever hat you have, you're just going to take the certain color. You're going to use the eyedropper tool right here on the side. You can hit the K key, I believe, to get it. Yes, the K key and you are just going to color in everything a solid color. 
but you only want to color it the color that it is if that makes sense so I'm gonna color all the red things red and all the green things green or whatever colors you have so if you have black hair you want to color all the black black or if you have blonde hair you want to color all the blonde blonde so I'm just gonna color that in really quick and what this does it gives our shadow head a really smooth texture that looks more like an avatar so now I have all the red colored in. I don't think I'm going to color in the green just because it looks more like a solid color already. So after you have everything colored in, what you want to do is go to File and just click Save. You don't want to click Save As, you just want to click Save so it overwrites the old file. You're just going to hit OK and it'll save for you. Now what you want to do is open every hat that you have and recolor them in with the solid color. Now of course you want to stay close to inside the lines but you know, it's not too big of a deal. Just make sure you stay relatively inside the lines. So now that the glasses are done too, what I'm gonna do is go hit save at the top again and just do the exact same thing. Now you wanna repeat this for about every single hat that you have, just so everything gets a nice smooth texture. That's all the hats I really have to color other than the antenna, but my antenna are already a solid green color so they do not need colored as you can see. I will just open them to show you really quick. So see that's already a green color so I don't really have to do anything about that because it's already the color we need. So now after you're done coloring all your hats and they're all done, you can X out paint.net and now you can go into Blender. Now this looks super crazy, but I will be walking you guys through every step so you know what to do and it's actually super easy. So you're just going to enter Blender and first of all you want to get rid of this little block in the middle because that's not really necessary for what we're doing. So what you want to do is hit delete on your keyboard and it'll come up with this little pop up and you just want to hit delete on that and it'll get rid of the block for you. Now right here at the top where it says file on the left, you want to hit file and then towards the bottom import and then wavefront.obj so you're just gonna click that and it's gonna take you right here you wanna go where your file is that you saved from Roblox Studio so since I put mine on the desktop I'm gonna go to desktop and then open the folder I would recommend you guys also put your folders on the desktop because that just makes it a lot easier because it's highlighted right here in Blender so what you want to open is that you want to open the .obj one, not the other one, this one. You're just going to double click and it'll open it for you. So now that you have your character loaded in, you might notice, uh, you know, they're gray, they don't have any color. So what you want to do is at the top plus right over here, you're just going to drag that out and it'll open even more settings. So you're just going to click down here, you're going to hit textured solid and ambient occlusion and you can just put that back because we're all done with that. And what that does, of course, it just gives your character color and makes them all pretty. So now we need to add our settings over here so it renders correctly and makes it look really good. I use 4K settings. So how you wanna get 4K settings is over here in the resolution. You want to make the X 3840 and you want to make the Y 2160 and at the bottom you want to turn this 50% up all the way to 100% and what that'll do is take it from just normal render settings to 4k and it'll make it higher quality and a bigger image so it's easier to work with now right down here at shading I'll highlight it right here what you want to do is open this and under alpha you want to click transparent and what that does is that it changed the background from gray to transparent when you render it so it's easier to put things behind it so you can just close shading we're pretty much all done with that now what you want to click is the little world up here at the top and after you click this you're going to turn on environment lighting right here not any of the other ones. I use the other ones for other renders, but for shadow heads, I just use environment lighting. So now, after you have the environment lighting turned on, you're gonna go to the top right here with all these different settings, right above the world and the camera that we were just at. You may have to scroll to find it, but you're just gonna click lamp right here. So now you can see that they added more little setting bars right here. What you wanna do is click the little light going out in all four directions. Right here at lamp, you're going to hit Hemi, and that's going to change the lighting a little bit. 
Now what you can do is under energy right here, you can change it to a different percent if you want to. I recommend usually changing it to 0.6, but after you render you can see what it looks like and then change your mind if you want to. You can really just mess with this and figure out what lighting works best for you. So now, I think that's all the settings we need to change. So now we're just going to go back to the little camera on top right here, and we can kind of close this bar a little bit and make it smaller. Now to set up the camera. What you want to do is click the zero key on your keyboard on the keypad. You don't want to hit the zero like number at the top, but on the keypad. I'll put a little picture right here showing you where it would be. Now after you're in the camera, you're going to hit Shift and F at the same time and it'll let you move the camera around freely. You can use W, A, S, and D to move and you can use the Shift key to move around faster and not hold it down to go slower. So now you want to position your head right in the center of the camera. As you can see, there is a rectangle box right on the camera and that shows what will be rendered. So you want to make sure your character is inside that rectangle box. After you get your character lined up, you can just hit enter and it'll let you go back to moving the mouse again. If you have to move your camera again, just remember you hit shift and F and then enter to turn it off. So now that I think my character is nice and lined up, we're going to go on the right right here again and click this big camera button that says render. So now our image is all rendered in. I think I like the lighting on mine, but if you do not like the lighting on yours and need to change anything about it, all you need to do is go down in the very bottom left and select this drop down menu. You're going to open it, it's the one with the little picture. At the very bottom of the list you'll select 3D view and it'll take you back to the screen where you were editing everything. So then you can change it if you have to and don't have to start all over. So when you are finally happy with your image, which I am, I think it came out well, what you need to do is right next to that drop down menu I just showed you, you're going to click image and then click save as image, which is the third option on the list. So you're just going to click that, select your folder, which mine is on the desktop. You are just going to open your folder and save it as whatever you want. I'm just going to name it pickle since that's part of my username. So on the right, you're just going to click Save as Image, and then you're pretty much done in Blender. All you need to do is open Paint.net and then make the final changes to your image. So now we're back in Paint.net. So what you want to do is go back to the file on the top, open, and it should automatically take you to your folder. If it doesn't, then you know you just find it again. So you're just going to select your rendered image and open it. Now what you want to do so it is a perfect square, you are going to go up to image and then click canvas size. You are going to make the width the same as the height. So you are going to make the top number the same as the bottom number, 2160. And what you want to do is make sure that this little middle box is clicked instead of any of the other ones so it crops from the middle. So now you're just going to hit OK and it will make it a perfect square. Usually you need perfect squares for YouTube icons or Discord icons or whatever you want to use this for, so it's good to have it in a perfect square. So now, the next step you want to do is on the right over here, the little layers box. What you want to do is go to the very bottom with this little green plus and select add new layer. Then you want to drag this new layer under your first layer up here and select your color that you want the background to be in the color box down in the bottom left. I'm going to make mine a light pink, I think. So then, what you need to do is click the little paint bucket tool. You can also hit the F key on your keyboard to get to it. You're just going to click the background and it'll fill it in. Make sure you have selected the bottom layer and not the top layer or it, you know, will mess up like that. So now that you have the background colored in, we are going to make the shadow. So what you want to do is add another layer and put it in between the top layer and the color layer. In the little color box down here, you are going to select the solid black color. And in the very bottom of the toolbox right here, you are going to select the shapes tool. You can also hit the O button on your keyboard to get to it with a shortcut. Now what you want to do at the very top right here is that where you see these little shape outlines, you want to click this once so it changes into solid shapes instead of the shape outlines. Now you would just make a square like this and just rotate it and change it as needed to fit behind you and make a shadow. So after you have your shape and it's like a shadow in the background, what you want to do is take your eraser and clean up all the edges. At the top you can change your settings to a bigger brush. 
What I like to do is turn up the hardness of the brush to 100% so it has a nice smooth line instead of a really soft line. So you're just going to clean up the edges a little bit and make it look more like a shadow. So after you have your shadow all set up, what you want to do is double click the shadow layer right here. You can tell it's the shadow layer because it has the square on it. And what you want to do is change the blending mode and you want to change it to overlay and it'll change it to a shadow now. You can turn this up and down to decide how dark or light your shadow is. So I'm going to make it about 118 right here. So that's pretty much all the steps. If you want to add more stuff in your background, you can put a layer in between the shadow and the background and just make any shapes that you want. Because the shadow is one layer, you can add anything and it'll be added to the shadow underneath as you can see. It'll make it the lighter and darker color without having to edit anything else. There's just one more step and it's to scale your profile picture. So what you want to do is hit image resize and make the size 800 by 800 and this is usually is only for if you're going to be using it as a YouTube icon because YouTube icons are required to be 800 pixels by 800 pixels so if you need your icon to be a certain size you can just go to image resize right here and change it to what size you need it to be usually you can google what size is needed for what program or website so that's pretty much it now all that's left to do is just save it so you'll hit file save as and then give it a name so I'm gonna name it profile picture and what you want to do where it says save as type you don't want it to be paint.net you want it to be PNG so it can be uploaded on YouTube and everywhere else and you're just gonna hit save and just hit OK it'll ask you if you want to flatten it you just want to hit flatten that just kind of puts all your layers together and that is pretty much it so that is it for this tutorial I hope it helped you guys a lot Please leave me a comment down below if you guys need any more help or have any questions because I will come and answer them for you. Please also make sure to leave a big thumbs up if this tutorial helped you and maybe share it with your friends. You can also subscribe if you are new to my channel because I do a lot of graphics videos and sometimes gaming videos. So if you enjoy graphics or gaming, you will enjoy my channel. So you might want to leave a subscription. So anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. And thanks for watching. I hope that I help you guys make a profile picture. And I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye!